Fordham had another chance to beat VCU here at the Rose Hill Gym as they lost on the road earlier in the year, but that allowed 24 offensive rebounds to the VCU Rams, and the other Rams could not shoot from the outside as Fordham lost this one 85-66. to I told the team if we fixed our rebounding issues and we kept the other two stats in that neighborhood, we, we had a chance to win the game. But while they went and got 24 offensive rebounds, and that was the difference in the game. You know, the points they scored, uh, second chance points, 24 to 10 there. I thought that was a big difference, but, uh, and, and most of them in the paint. So 36 points in the paint, Redick was great. Uh, you know, as a veteran front court guy, you, you know, he's very efficient in everything that he does. Yeah, Redick had 22 points and 12 rebounds. Fordham was only down by two at the half, but VCU used a 23 to six run to pull away as the Maroon Rams allowed the Black Rams to shoot 48% from the field and 60% from downtown. But defense hasn't been the only problem during the stretch. There's been two issues, major issues, I think, in my mind. One has been getting that kind of team effort for 40 minutes consistently. You know what I mean? We've had a couple games where we've gotten it. Obviously, early in the year, we're winning some games because of it. Uh, but we haven't gotten that, and our offensive field goal percentage. You know, once again, I'll watch this tape twice tonight, and I'll shot. I'll do. I do a shot chart, and I mean, we got some really good looks. And if you're going to beat VCU, you got to make those shots. You got to got to knock them down. We beat their pressure. We got some great threes, wide open threes for some of our guys, and uh, and, and we couldn't knock them down. We shoot five of 18 from three. Uh, you know, it's just, uh, you know, that, that can't happen. Brian doesn't make one and John's two for seven. And they didn't take a lot of real tough contested threes. They had pretty good looks at it. So those have been our two Achilles heels, I think. One positive for Fordham tonight was the play of Ryan Canty. The junior center had 10 rebounds as well as four blocks. He finished with only two points, but it's good to see number 42 play well in a physical game. Live body, you know, he's giving us that energy and and we're not getting that now from Rooms and Leonard as much. You know, foul trouble has been it, but, but Canty, uh, you know, Canty's, he's, he didn't defend the post well. He was playing behind Redick, but uh, he rebounds the basketball. He blocks shots, so he gives us another dimension. So he, right now, I don't believe he's the problem. I think it's, it's good that he's around. Now, not having him for that stretch in the middle of the year didn't help the process any, but, you know, that's life in a big city. That's just like having somebody injured, so you just deal. Three other Rams scored in double figures. Freshman John Severe and sophomore Mandel Thomas had 14 points apiece, while senior guard Brandon Frazier had 10 points in the loss. Coach can only imagine where this program would be if Brandon had a sidekick. I feel bad that he's kind of butch without Sundance. You know, if we had had another, if we had had another guy in that class that really uh, progressed like he did, we would have turned this thing around. Um, everything. You know, we're doing everything here except winning. You know, I mean, look where we're sitting. We've come a long way in three years. So obviously the last step in the process and what I get paid for is winning basketball games. And that's what's got to happen as we move forward. But Brandon is going to end up being in the top ten in scoring and the top three maybe in assists or five in assists here. And it's, uh, I know he would give all of that away to be able to say he was here and he helped us turn it around again and have a winning season. Fordham has now lost five games in a row, and with only three games left on the regular season schedule, I asked Coach Bacor, what's your message to the team? I told them to man up. I tell them all the time, you know what, guys, this isn't the worst thing that's going to happen to you in your life, losing basketball games. Your parents are going to die. You're going to have friends who die. You're going to deal with real life issues, health issues, things like that. This is a college basketball game. But play it like a man. Don't play it like a little boy. And if you're not ready to come out and compete, stay in your dorm room. And that's been my message to them for a long time. Some of them are responding, but they kind of get uh, overshadowed by a few that aren't. And that's an issue, and that's a postseason issue that I'll address. But that's the bottom line, guys. You go out and you compete. You know? I mean, they're 20-year-old men. They could be on the side of a mountain in Afghanistan. You complaining about playing basketball? You know, you could have this worse, worse stuff going on in this world than college basketball. So come out and practice your ass off every day and play your ass off every opportunity you get to step on the court. It's now February and in college basketball time, it's too late to go back to the drawing board. So the only thing this team can do at the moment is rally the troops. My staff and I are best when things are worst. And that's why I know they're good guys and we have a good staff. Because when things are worse, we rally around each other and we make sure we push each other to do the right thing and to, do, and to get better. 
And that's what we need this young team to do. They got to start rallying around each other and pushing each other to get better. Fordham now only has two days to prepare for LaSalle, who was in the NCAA tournament last year and can shoot the lights out of the basketball. But the thing that the Rams have to do in order to win some of the games down the stretch is to treat this orange cylinder with a lot of confidence. Shoot from outside, shoot inside the paint. Any way to put the basketball in the cylinder and raise that shooting percentage. Reporting from the Rose Hill Gym, Donnie Dwyer, thesportscycle.com.